Welcome back. I think today we're going to try to finish off the Velos storyline. I, uh, I feel kind of bad that we just immediately fell into into this and we aren't able to do anything because we got enslaved. Uh, but that's that's what that's the risk you run when you enter the wide world. Uh, now the other thing you may notice is that all of the planets are back to their regular size, and that's mostly because I kind of realized after rewatching that um, they're obnoxiously large in the recording. So we got rid of that. Uh, I, I think they didn't look as obnoxiously large on higher resolutions, which is which is why I didn't think they looked so bad then. But they do look bad now, so. So we're getting rid of it. And, you know, the original art is still quite nice. Um, I don't really remember where we were. Uh, no one's really giving us any missions, are they? Uh, sure. It is getting hard to see around here. Man, I'll kind of regret having to... I think, I think, on our second playthrough, our goal is going to be to upgrade from our shuttle faster, because I did not realize quite how crazy uh, slow it is. Because I haven't played this game in a while, and I got went back to it, and I was like, oh, this is slow, I remember it being slow, so I guess that's fine. But, uh, ah! Ugh. As soon as you walk in, you spot the beautiful Commander Crane sitting at a table trying to fend off unwanted... Uh, fending... Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> I also can't talk. You spot the beautiful Commander Crane sitting at a table trying to fend off an unwanted male suitor. You make your way over quickly in the hope that you can discourage him enough so that Crane will forget the incident and let him live. There you are, she exclaims, smiling before turning back to the man. I'm sorry, but my business associate has arrived and we must speak in private. Could you excuse us for a moment? The man takes one long look at you before nodding slightly sullenly and heading back to the bar to buy a drink. Your hopes sink when you sense Crane filling the incident, filing the incident away to be dealt with after you leave. He's lucky you turned up when you did, she informs you icily and, make, and, you, la and you laugh. She shakes off her bad mood. I have another message that needs to get to the Moash. That means it's time to kick play Courier again. This message inside the pod contains the details on the next stage of our operation, she explains quietly. We want the Moash House to step up the raids into our space and begin amassing an armada of their own. At a preordained time detailed in the message you will be carrying, a Federation force will be attacked by the Moash and destroyed. Public opinion will be inflamed and war will be declared. An enormous Federation fleet will head down into a roaring space in response and will begin running amok, but only selectively slow. The end result will be the destruction of the four other major houses. Then, the remaining survivor, being the Moash House, will sue for peace and we will grant it. Again, I'm only telling you this, she reminds you seriously, in case the Moash elders do not open the message pod correctly. Return to New England when you're done, she tells you dismissively. You look over at the would-be suitor. Don't worry about him, she continues quietly. He'll be taken care of. What a friendly f Yeah. I do not like Commander Crane. Although, if you do like Commander Crane... There is, uh, there is an unfortunate storyline in which, in which you can, uh, befriend her. Why, why you would do that, I don't know. Actually, I don't remember if you befriend her. You may betray her and kill her. I, it's, I mean, what, what do you expect, really? <laughs> Greetings. Oh, well. Ah, well. They really are like the Klingons. In between the last recording session and now, I uh, decided to go on, hop on YouTube and see how many other people have actually played through Le uh, Legend of Grimrock, uh, between Escape Velocity. There don't seem to be that many people, so... <coughs> this is probably one of, uh, I don't know, five or, five or ten. Okay! That's a Vela. Okay, why are they getting attacked? Interesting. Oh well. Let's get out of here. I really want that ship, but there's no way we're going to get it. Especially in this playthrough. Ah. <sighs> Seriously, just let us land. We have no business with you. 
As you pilot your way to the destination, you find yourself exploring the nature of the device attached to the nape of your neck. After several days, you learn that it works by influencing the part of your brain that controls your repetitive actions or actions that have become second nature. The end result is that you really realize that if you become skilled enough, you could simply bypass this portion of your brain, and you would be free to remove the device. You find yourself wondering how this device works on T1s like Lyral, who are more than skilled enough to do exactly this. Upon landing, you hand over the message pod to the same old warrior as last time and you watch him open it. After taking a few minutes to scan the contents, he turns to you and thanks you for your service. After returning to the landing pad, you quickly perform your protective shell and launch yourself into space. You find yourself becoming excited at the thought that one day you may, might be free. Ah! Yeah. The other thing was, uh, while watching uh, those... Uh, let's plays. They were in upgraded ships, and yeah, they they could take more than one hit, which was really our downfall. And I'm gonna try to not be in that situation where we uh, really can't do anything because we're in a shuttle. The other reason for getting rid of that mod is uh, it didn't. It kind of got rid of the distinction between the large planets and the small planets, um, and I I didn't like that. I uh, I guess I got used to it because I, I already knew all the distinct sizes. But I don't know. I I think if all of the planets were about half the size they had made them, or and or rather, if the regular sized planets were about half the size they made them, it might have worked. Upon landing on New England, you, you are again met by the soldier who is normally your contact at the bar. Yada, yada, yada. Commander Crane currently looking into it. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Well, you're kind of leaving us here without much to do. We can't really buy anything. This is, this is the problem when you're, you know, enslaved. <laughs> There's not much we can do. Oh, we do have the second weapon. I didn't... I thought we didn't. Oh, well. Uh, right. Where do we need to go? Georgia. You sense Lyril observing you as you glide your way into dock, and you send out a small weave to acknowledge his presence. I see you have learned to create the Summer Bloom. It took the Velos nearly seven centuries to learn that, that you have done well... That you have done well, perhaps it is time you learned how to better protect yourself against the hostile elements of the universe. Come watch. You follow his intelligence as it dances out and into the surrounding space and begins weaving a shell, which you quickly recognize as being a Velos arrow, and within moments you grasp the basics of it. When he sees that you have understood the lesson, he returns it to his body. You have definitely proved yourself to be a T2. I think it will not be long before you reach T1, as I have your strength as I have. Your strength and skill is growing, and it will not be long before you rival even me. You shake your head as you... Yeah, you can see these were pretty much full, and now we got so much space. It's great. You shake your head as you finally dissolve the protective barriers around you and make your way over to where Lyril is sitting. But you realize that you have picked up everything he has taught you within a matter of moments, and that the new weaves he has just shown you were not that difficult to follow, nor was the energy required to f difficult for you to create. You may yet prove to be the one that will lead us to our freedom. Don't, do not worry, you are not far from your own freedom, but our freedom will require more effort on your part. He stands and nods his head in recognition of your prowess before moving off into the crowds, milling the space dock. Commander Crane is waiting for you in the cane band bar as I speak. I suggest you meet with her. Well, what a friendly fellow. Now we get an even cooler ship. So we have Summer Bloom. I guess that's still all we have. So we only have... Oh, right. Oh, right, right, right. So the Summer Bloom uh, is a targetable thing. So we could, if we wanted, go over here... And board this ship. There's a pretty good chance. No. Stop that. Well, fine. Let's try. Yeah. Okay. That is. That is highly effective. That is very effective. We can't. What? Why? Well, fine. Oh, I wonder if we can't board it because we're a Velos. Oh, man. We get crazy good weapons and a fancy ship and just can't do anything with them. I mean, we can once we're once we're free. We could go con conquer the galaxy. I may save this file just so we can do that. 
You walk straight past the soldier who is the... Yeah, yeah. Getting a little cocky, are we? Asks Crane icily when you enter. You will observe proper procedure every time you wish to see me. Understood? Uh, you nod without thinking. Good. Now down to business. She continues in a more moderate tone. We have recently discovered that the Polaris have an intelligence organization that has managed to infiltrate into the Federation, and possibly the Bureau for the past few years without our knowledge. We want you to find their headquarters before returning here. Sorry. Ah. All right. What we know about the Polaris isn't much, so you'll be going into this without much forewarning. However, if anyone is capable of making their way into the Polaris defense grid, it would be one of you, Velos. Besides which, she points out seriously, the Polaris feel that they owe you people a debt for what you for what you did when you sided with them against the Council, Colonial Council centuries ago. You refrain from pointing out that you are just a telepath, not a Velos, because the informa uh, because the information you are getting could well save your life, and mentioning it to her might well endanger it. We have no idea where the Mohari have their headquarters located, she concludes dismissively. But once you have found it, you are to return here for a de debrief. Uh, well, uh, so just, 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 okay. I guess we're off on our exploration then. This ship is slower, I don't like it. Um, I played this storyline once before. Oh, by the way, I looked it up and it's not actually two to 5%, it's 8%, but still 8%. So, uh, the bigger problem is you're more likely to hit all of the other main storylines before you hit this one, so. We just got lucky, because I was probably avoiding the barge, because I didn't want to get this storyline. Or at least, I didn't want to get any storyline before we, you know, had something to do. Hmm. Where would their headquarters be? I'm, I'm checking the eastern reaches, because the Polaris are off to the east. But I don't really know. I mean, we basically just have to land everywhere. Being a telepath, hopefully, that would, uh, work. Hmm. Why isn't that? Okay. I don't remember the keys for this game at all. I should probably look them up. We now have 60 capacity, though, so that's nice. We could start hiring, um, escorts as well, and then make some trading money. But again, what would we use it for? Okay, I don't really know where to go. I guess we could go outbound. Yeah, this is sort of cheating. Like, as a Polaris, or as a Velos, we, well, okay, as a telepath, we know that um, we can scan systems out. Huh. Well... <clears throat> I really feel like it would be off to the east, but I could be totally wrong. Oh, hey, let's try, uh, let's try that. Okay, that is just way too effective. This ship is crazy, crazy powerful. It's the only weapon we have, but still. Do we need another weapon? Man, I don't know where to go. I mean, literally, there's nothing for us to do other than go out to every planet and check the bar. Ha! <sighs> it... Okay, so these are all uh, Auroran, right? Yeah, so these are all Auroran. Doesn't make sense to go down there, then. Um... Hmm... Wouldn't be Soul. This is tough. I'm not sure where to go. Well, we'll be back. I'm an idiot. We're supposed to go to Pol uh, Polaris space after all. <clears throat> I didn't get too far before finding that out. Still, off to Polaris space we go. Eventually. 
I don't like how, how this ship is slower. Uh, it's fine. So we will land... Oh, there is... There are no stellar objects present on Polaris. Fascinating. Now, the Polaris are dangerous folk. The question is... So we were supposed to find the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have awesome ships. They have awesome ships. Awesome ships. Yeah. The oh, man, they have awesome ships. Yeah. Awesome, awesome ships. It's too bad we can't buy anything. Wait, why can we buy a mass retool? That doesn't even make sense. I mean, we could, but it wouldn't do us any good, you know? Oh! Oh! Oh, I totally forgot about them! Wait. No, I'm... I'm I still... I remembered something. There is another alien race, uh, but that's not what I was... Never mind. The Polaris have the absolute best weapons. They have the absolute best everything. It's amazing. I love the Polaris. Um... So, we were looking for something that starts with a moo, right? Oh boy. Uh huh. Well. None of this starts with an M. It wasn't an M, right? I don't remember Polaris space all that well. I mean, you don't normally come up here. Unless you're in the Polaris or Villa storylines. As I recall. Well, okay, I'm, I'm just making stuff up. I don't think that's actually true. I think you do eventually end up here. Oh, that starts with an M. Wait. Muhari. Ha! Ha! That's what we're looking for. Nice. As soon as you land, you can feel the buzz of intelligence network swirling around you. You can sense more than a few T4s and T5s trying to read your intent, but you easily blunt their attempts to observe you. You quickly cast your mind around, and you can sense that a large number of the people working here consider themselves to be a member of the Muhari, and this confirms your suspicions. Without even dissolving a protective shell, you take off again, leaving the Polaris wondering as to your motives in landing. As you start your long journey back to Seoul, you catch flashes of awe coming from the Polaris on the planet, and you realize that Crane was correct that these people still feel indebted to the Velos for what they did to them. You cannot help but laugh quietly at the thought that an advanced civilization like the Polaris can still make mistake you for a Velos. Well, I'm just saying. Well, I mean, it's right there. The barrel is filled with people wearing the black of the Muhari. Oh, well. No missions. Not like we can... Yeah, we can't... Yeah. Yeah. Well. Back to Earth. I'm glad that I found out that we weren't supposed to land on every planet in, in the Federation, because that would have taken a very long time for zero reward. <sighs> this is the fastest way to get really awesome ships, though. I mean, we can't use it for anything. I believe we have one more ship after this. Uh, weren't we supposed to report back? Wait, we... Okay, returning to Earth, yeah. You are met by a calm-looking Commander Crane when you land, but you can sense that her, despite her unruffled exterior, she is quite worried about the threat poised by the Mahari. Did you find it? She asks slightly impatiently as you wake your way over. You nod and inform her, coor inform her of the coordinates of the Mahari system and the Muar Haro planet. That's too far away, she mutters in an annoyed tone. We're going to have to deal with them from this end. You are slightly taken aback at her, at her display of emotion and say nothing as she thinks for a few moments. All right, there's no use beating ourselves up about things we can't deal with, she sighs quietly. Keep an eye out in the bar and we're going to have to do this the hard way. Um, let's, let's hope this, this goes quickly then. Because uh, 
as I said, I kind of want to restart and actually play the game. This is a good thing to have happen to you on, like, your third or fourth playthrough. Ah. <laughs> 40,000 credits. <laughs> For the privilege of having a Velos carry his cargo. Well, sure. Sure. Although you can see, the universe is getting uh, pretty well filled out now. Um, actually, can we... Yeah. So you can kind of see... The purple of the Polaris, the red of the f uh, the red of the um, Aurorans, and the Federation. Uh, the Velos would have been up here, but they are dead. And there are a couple. Uh, I guess you can't see it this zoomed out, but you, there are a couple Rebel planets up here. Ah well. Um, Georgia and... Okay, perfect. Like, what do we need money for? It's not like we can do anything with it anymore. <sighs> we might try taking over... No, we need to build up a... Yeah, we have to build up a pretty significant combat rating before we can... Uh... Before we can try to take over a, take over a, a planet. We might still try. We haven't even been to, like, half the planets I wanted to. It's crazy. Didn't get a star bridge. Again, this would have been the perfect thing to have happen to us on, like, a second or third playthrough. Ha! But that's how this game rolls. And I love it. I love it. Ah, oh, I love it so much. Hmm... Apparently we can make bank for being in a Velos. Which, once again, doesn't really do us any good. I suppose we could actually... Well, if we do get freed, we may be able to buy better ships. Well, I say better ships, except not really. Uh, how do I... this one. Oh, that is... oh man, that is... that is frighteningly good. That is frighteningly good. You don't understand how frighteningly good that is. Are the pirates unhappy with us? Oh, they are. Well... We don't particularly care, because we are frighteningly powerful. And, and this is the mid-tier ship, like... Oh! It is... This was the speedy way to uh, fame and glory. We are not even close to... I mean, we... Yeah, we don't need to worry about things. Ah! You can sense the deceitful mind of Commander Crane waiting for you as soon as you enter the bar, you... Hmm. So, as soon as you enter the bar, you make your way over to her. Remember the problem we've got with the Muhari? She asks quietly once you sit down. You nod as the familiar feeling of depression settles over you when you realize you're about to start destroying another group of people for the Bureau. That's right, whatever happened to the Rebels, we were supposed to destroy them at some point. We must... This quest line must be... off somehow. Because I know it works before. Oh, well. Um... Well, we need to know a little more about them before we can formulate any real plan of action. Now, we've located a lady we believe to be a Muhari. Uh, she's currently living on Earth, and I want you to go confirm whether she is a Mu whether or not she is a Muhari spy, and then make a report to the Bureau headquarters in on New England and in the blah, 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 on New England in the Wolf Three Five Nine system. And don't dally. We need this information as fast as possible. Well, you can wait. I have deliveries to make. We almost have our first million credits, too. The Polaris probably still f pose a threat to us, but... Oh man, that is... that's just cheating. 
Okay, so these are the rebels. Uh, where is the where are the pirates? I don't remember. I don't remember where the pirates are. There's just so much we haven't explored. Ah. Uh. I'm tempted to also uh, do one of the total conversion mods, because um, there is a pretty cool uh, total conversion. Uh, it's really well fleshed out. It takes mere moments to locate a, the woman you were sent to find because of her mind show, bleh, because her mind shows obvious signs of having telepathic ability. After a few moments of careful weaving, you gently touch her mind and sense that while she has the ability to become a T4, she has yet to learn how to manipulate matter and so is still a T5. She's a fairly skilled one, and a couple times you are forced to cleverly weave around her, your probe to stop her from detecting it. You realize now how Lyra must have felt when he first saw you. You have no choice but to report that this brave young woman has telepathic abilities, despite the fact that you know what she will soon go through. As you put up your protective barrier, you find yourself hoping against hope that the Bureau will decide to kill her rather than risk trying to enslave her. But as you point yourself in the direction of New England and the Wolf 359 system, you know the Bureau will never allow such a tempting fish to slip through their fingers. Yep. How many games can you say where you end up becoming a slave and have to, you have to finish out a storyline? Like, that's... I love this. I love this. As you pilot your way down through the atmosphere, you can sense the mind of a soldier who is your... Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, this will complicate things a little, he grimaces. Uh, after a few seconds, he straightens. I was going to bring you along with us to capture her, but if she is capable of giving you a hard time, if you're just trying to probe, I think that it would be a little too risky. For now, I'm going to leave you to your own devices, but don't go too far away and keep an eye out on the mission BBS, as we will probably be requiring your services again before too long. As he walks away, you cannot help but feel a moment of triumph knowing that you have spared the life of one brave young lady for at least a little while. I suppose. We don't need money. There's nothing we can buy. Okay, technically we can buy this. Oh, no, we can't. Okay, yeah, I was going to say we can't buy any of this stuff because none of it works because we're a mind ship. We're a mind ship. Ugh. Oh. Thunderhead Bay. <laughs> that would be funny. We craft a ship out of our mind and then have a... Have a... Uh... Yeah, see, well, we want to get one of these. Well, not one of these, but one of these types of ships. Or perhaps... Or per well, no, Terrapins are way too slow. I, I can't... Ha! That was funny. Terrapins are way too slow. Uh, the only thing I think would have made this game better is if there were slightly more chances to jump off the storylines. No, I say that, but that's just because we're in this storyline where we're, like, literally forced to not do things so never mind because the other storylines you can basically say no at any time and, and jump off so oh my that is so many things i okay why are there so many of these i don't understand i've never seen that many missions Hopefully, this will give us plenty of credits. Oh, that is so many places to go. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> space Dock, Kane, Space Dock, New England, uh, New Babylon. So I think this one, um, hang on, I need to figure out what the key binds are. Uh, weapon safety, escort, miscellaneous, uh, map, player info. Oh, show frame. I didn't know you could do that. Um, okay. Yeah. K. Oh, alt K. Yeah. See, I was right. Alt K. Uh, recall, C, hold position, land, communicate. Uh, I was sure there was one that let you select a different. Hmm. Hyper select backslash. Is that what I've been missing? Oops. Oh no. Oh no. Uh Oh. Nice. That's not what I want to do, but still. Uh so this was not where we needed to go. So 
We are in Nether Primus. Um, New Babylon. Oh boy. <clears throat> That, that was a Polaris ship. Fascinating. Made our first million credits and we can't even do anything about it. Oh, this is this is it. You know, a lot of work went into this game. Like, there's so much art, there's so much text, there's so much everything. It's amazing. Like, this is one of those games, like, eh, it was just a happy confluence of all the right factors. In my mind. I think, I think Chrono Trigger was another one of those. Uh, which one of these do we need? Uh, Enlightenment. Kismet. Yeah. I'm not reading any of those, because they're all basically the same. You know, now that we're... That is just frighteningly, frighteningly powerful. I don't think I... Oh yeah, what is our... Uh... We have good ability, apparently. Where are we? Why do we have... Oh, because we're in the government of Roughnecks. That's why I was... That's why they don't like us. Um... Eh... Uh, where are we? Connie? Um... Nope, that's not it. Nether Secundus. Space Dock 5. This is Pyrogenes 1. Well, with all that, we head back to... Oh, uh, this one. It is... Okay, so the only problem with this... Oh, they had a, they had an escape pod. How nice. I don't feel bad about killing them now. Uh, the only problem with all of this is that... Uh, it's really hard to not destroy them. <laughs> and you don't want to destroy the ships all the time. Really? Fine. I figured doing all that would uh, give it time to... Give us time to uh, wait for the next mission, but I guess not. I don't know why there were so many missions on Mars. As soon as you glide down to land, you cannot help but smile. Oh, is this? I think this is the final ship. Wow, okay. As soon as you glide down to land, you cannot help but smile when you sense Flirin waiting for you in this spaceport. I see you have grown since the last time you met. I'm last, uh, since we last met. You look like life as a slave is wearing you down. Perhaps I can offer some temporary cheer. Have you yet learned about the javelin or the autumn petal? You shake your head, smiling in eagerness. He laughs and pokes you in the shoulder with his telekinetic finger. Well... Watch closer, he says aloud, and I will show you how. You sit down, preparing to follow Florin's mind, when suddenly your mind is filled with images of him weaving a javelin into existence around himself. After a few moments of surprise, you adjust to the different methods of teaching and begin following Florin's step weave by weave until you have created a javelin of your own. Eh, so we got a bunch more armor here, but only a couple more jumps and not much more shielding. Uh, more importantly, we get the new uh, we get the new weapon. As soon as he recognizes that you have picked up the lesson, he begins bombarding your mind with images of him weaving a flower of spring, quickly turning it into a summer bloom, and then weaving what appears to be falling petals around it to contain the enormous energies he is pouring into it. You spend several seconds recreating his weaves while getting commentary from Flirin until you are both satisfied. He ends the connection as quickly as he started it, and you come away grinning, but a lot puzzled as why he's taught you differently than Lyril. 
Lyril is a T1, even though I'm a strong T2, his abilities far outstrip mine, not to mention that he is a, he as a, that as a T1, he can unify the energy of several telepaths at once into one wave of energy to use at his disposal. Anyway, speaking of Lyril, he has been talking to Crane, and she wants to meet you on New England. I hope I have cheered you up at least a little. You are going to need it if you have to deal with her. So now we have the final ship in the, uh, oh man, that is slow. Oh, we, ow. Oh. Wait. Nice. So now we can have ones that, oh, that's very cool. Very cool. Summer Bloom was the fancy one, right? So we got flower, spring, summer. Oh no, it is autumn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're good. You can probably sense a theme here. <laughs> you can sense the plotting mind of Commander Crane waiting for you as you slide down through the atmosphere. As soon as you dissolve your protective barrier, she comes over. We are going to start without about start going about looking for the Mohari a little more cleverly. Now, you say you can detect them easily. You nod, realizing the Bureau may have found a way to exploit your attempts to save the Mohari. Excellent. Here's what I want you to do. Simply put, look around, keep your telepathic senses open. I, I want you to find these damn Mahari, and when you do, I want you to report back here. Understand? Good. Now get get to work. Uh, that's... Okay. Ha! <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, fine. That's, that's fine. Just find them? Maybe this is when we have to, uh, um, maybe this is when we have to go crawling around the, uh, Federation. Oh. I see. Ah. Never mind. As soon as you land, you can sense the foreign thought patterns of a Mohari from across the globe. You take the trouble to go and get pictures of the Mohari in the local bar so the Bureau will be able to identify the man should they need to. After getting the photos processed, you head back onto space with a heavy heart to report back to Commander Crane. Ah, uh, it's sad. I kind of want to go build up our combat ability, but, uh, well, we probably will do, af do that after after this. To your surprise, you can sense Commander Crane already waiting for you as you gently s Why would this be surprising anymore? I take it you have yet another Mahari to report? Whereabouts? Okay. She nods, barely even glancing at the photos. We've come up with a plan to deal with these Mahari, and we'll be needing your skills. Meet, meet, the, meet me in the bar in one hour. You spend the hour, sitting in a quiet corner of the bar, keeping tabs on the location of Commander Crane as she flits from one corner of the Bureau HQ to another. But, in, but as soon as the hour approaches, she makes her way toward the bar, and you can sense, her, sense in her a new focus. The Mahari Noof threat is too large to deal with solely from this end. We believe that we have located most of their network, but it would be too difficult for us to shut it down without, shutting them, without them shutting down going to ground. And given the skills we have seen displayed by these Muhari so far, we would be hard-pressed to pull in more than about half of the ones we are aware of. So we need something else for them to focus on. We need the Polaris to bring in as many of their resources as possible so that we can concentrate our efforts and nab as much of their network as possible in one single operation. Now, as you may or may not know, the Auroran operation went forward without a hitch some months ago, and we have a unified ally that shares a border of the Polaris. So, I am ordering you to liaise with the Auroran Task Force that is currently forming in the Senator system. Once you have met the Task Force Commander on the Kunjo Station, you are to proceed to the Polaris capital, Kalar-E, in the Kalar-E system, doing as much damage as possible along the way as, uh, doing as much damage along the way as possible. You are to act primarily as a guide, but do not flinch from helping the Aurorans do their work. However, the Auroran ships will, are largely irrelevant. If they do not survive to return to Auroran space, I won't be shedding any tears. As it is, I'm going to dis it is going to be vexing enough to have to barter with the Moash to gain control over the Polaris. Any questions? No? Good. You shake your head, despairing at the damage you are about to inflict. Where are we supposed to go? <laughs> Uh, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, they're just they're just coming with us. Okay. So we don't have to do anything. Um interesting. I kind of figured that they would Oops.
I figured we would get an Auroran Escort at some point. In the sender system, I mean... Oh, I wonder if the... Oh, the Aurorans might share a border with the Polaris. I didn't even think about that. I see. Hulpa Nebula. I didn't realize the outskirts of the Aurorans, uh, the Aurorans would share their border with the uh, Polaris. You sense the awe-filled reactions of the waiting Aurorans as they watch you slide down to the landing pad. As soon as you dissolve your protective shell, an older warrior with hundreds of small tattoos covering his exposed areas of flesh makes his way over and introduces himself as the task force commander, Arkrak. You are here to guide us into battle against the mysterious Polaris, no? We will meet in a cut. We will need a couple hours to make our final arrangements. Meet me in the bar in three hours, and we will be ready. With that, he turns on his heel, and you watch him give a few quiet orders. Whereupon his men scurry into action. You can sense the almost arrogantly self-confident mind of our crack moving around, receiving reports, and giving orders as you sit in the fairly deserted bar. The more you study the man, the more you come to admire him. You can sense his awesome sense of honor, which he uses to guide his every uh, decision, and you are more than a little impressed by his incredible physical capabilities. You can even sense his dislike of his fellow Moash warriors, whom he despises as dishonorable and soft. When he walks into the bar slightly more than three hours later, he apologizes for, apologizes for being tardy, but you wave it away as being irrelevant. He bows in response. We are ready to go, he tells you after a short bow. All we need is your guidance. You nod, and with a sinking heart, remember Crane's order to make sure that none of the Auroran ships... Oh, I didn't get that, actually. To make sure that none of the Auroran ships survive the operation. You guess that the shady Moash sent the troublesome but effective our crack with that exactly in mind. Ugh... Oh. Well, we don't really have to do much to, um, uh, to let him die, because, uh, the Polaris are no joke. Yep. And here we are. Okay, this is... Okay, we can... The Polaris are no joke. Also, turn off time compression when you jump into the final system. Otherwise, you will die very quickly. Let's try this again. Uh, turn off time compression. There we go. Okay, so with any luck, I don't know, I wonder if we can get the midship without having to give up the autumn pedal, because the autumn pedal is a really fancy weapon. Okay, Kelar E is our last stop, so we will wait for the Aurorans to jump in behind us, or in front of us, and then kind of follow them up. Look at how much damage that does! My goodness! Okay, this might actually be kind of difficult. Yeesh. So the question is, yeah, there isn't really anything in between here and there that we can... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a place we can dock. But it doesn't look like there is one. So really, we just have to be lucky. Hey, this is one of the developers, Roger from Wootware. Do you want to some try some archery with some Velos arrows? Well, you'll lose. I have a Velos arrow, though. I think it's one of the developers. I could be wrong about that. 
Okay, so the trick is... How do we not die? I think the trick is... Well then. That is not the trick. That is not the trick. We will get this eventually though. Uh, autumn petal. There's gotta be something we can do to improve our chances, right? I mean, we could hire some support, but that seems boring. I think the trick is we just need to run away. We can we can handle the remaining forces. Yeah. Also, it doesn't look like there's as many Oh, that's a Polaris force. Oh dear. I'm tempted to... My goodness, those... Their missiles are... Way, way too effective. It's their missiles that are killing us. We basically just have to run away. Hopefully the Aurorans will knock down most of their fleet, but we just cannot uh, uh, survive their... their attacks. Yeah, it looks like the Aurorans are, are doing a fairly good job taking down their, um... Yeah, it looks, we're f looks like we're fine. Okay, the this is the only dangerous guy. Yeah! We were really close that time, though. We were really close. That was the last one here. So we just need to do that again and do it better. I'm also not very good at the uh, combat in this game. <laughs> I mean, if you hadn't noticed. The real trouble is we have to keep jumping back all the way there. You know, they say we can just uh, make as, or cause as much damage as we want on the way there, but honestly, if we made any stops, we wouldn't have enough of a force to defeat the Polaris uh, when we got there. Okay, so, first off, run away. Oh boy. Already, this is problematic. That is... Look how much damage that does. There's so much... Oh man, that is so much damage. Okay. We might have survived this time. There's... Uh, I don't want to get... Ah, oh, that's so much damage. Oh. Oh, man. I mean, look at that. Like, six or seven shots and we're dead. Oh, and it's coming after us. Fantastic. He's got to run out eventually, right? Eventually? Right? Eventually? Oh, he's jumping out. Okay. I mean, I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. Uh... Oh, they're all disabled. Fantastic. We have led them on a merry chase, so now we might be able to sneak in by... Or not. Or not. How are we supposed to survive that? It's not possible. I wonder... Hmm. The Polaris are just ultra deadly. If we fail this time, I'm not really sure what we're going to do. Run away! Okay, there's not too many... 
Yeah, there aren't too many ships in here this time. Look at all of those things. Look at all of these things. Oh, Polaris. Oh, boy. No, no, no. No, no. No. Nope. We are running away. We are running away as fast as humanly possible. Well, as velocity possible. So it looks like the only ones that are faster than us are the mantas. I think I'm okay with that. If we turn... See... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because we hit... We take one or two hits from... Yep, we're dead. Those missiles are... Deadly. I am not sure how to... How to how to deal with this. Am I doing something wrong? Like, we kind of hit an accelerated path because we hit the, uh, because we hit the Velos storyline. Like, everything has gone out the window. Everything I would normally be doing is, is different. I just wasn't expecting it. Again, 8% chance. But the 8% chance is... Ah... Uh, the 8% chance doesn't take into effect into account that you're more likely to hit the oh, okay, I was not paying attention. Uh everything, everything. Uh right. We're dead. I don't remember how to fight in this game. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, we got to do this somehow. There's a Polaris reinforcement fleet and they take out pretty much the entire Auroran uh, fleet before anything else happens. And there's going to be the typical traffic in, in and out of the system. We probably won't be able to... Yeah, we, we can't bribe them. Like, we're there to destroy them. We can't bribe them. Okay. We need to turn around. I need to remember to get my weapons out before they reach us. Look how fast those ships are. Look how fast those ships are. It's not even funny. Okay, the Scarab can definitely kill us. Like, everything about this is stacked against us. Those missiles are so you can get those missiles and there's an even more powerful version that I got like once though it may have been part of a mod I'm not really sure they're horribly 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 worrisome we can't fight the arachnids head-on because they have their their main cannon like we are just not in a good position at all we can continually fight the uh, mantas at least I think our strategy might just be to run away until they stop following us. If they ever do. Yeah, look at that. That hit that hit one and it just died. I mean they've gotta run out eventually, you would hope. Well, oh, whoops, that's not what I meant, uh, no, not, yeah, there we go. Hey, I'm amazed I remembered those commands. <laughs> so, the question is, Okay, so my wraiths have somehow survived attacking it. That may mean that they are out of... Um, that may mean they are out of uh, missiles. What I'm hoping we can do is now that these guys are way off behind us, uh, we can double back and land on the homeworld. Yeah, 
I would be doing this differently in most other circumstances. <laughs> However, their weaponry is just so far outstripping us, it's not even funny. Now, the only thing that could kill us is if more ships jump into the system, which we should be fine with, I hope. You never know. And I also don't know if we'll ever... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Please stop. Okay. As soon as you land, you are staggered by several thousand mines attacking you at once, as all the telepaths amongst the Polaris attack you in a desperate attempt to, say, protect their home planet. None of their attacks is anywhere near enough... <laughs> To destroy you, but the sheer volume nearly overwhelms you. In desperation, you begin to twist their attacks away in groups out into space, but it is not enough. It seems like an eternity, but after a titanic battle of about 15 seconds, they break through all of your barriers and stab into your mind. In a moment of sheer panic, you try to expel all the energy coming into your mind in a single powerful burst, which you control by adding weaves of storm clouds around the summer bloom weaves. You realize at the back of your mind that you have managed to create the devastating winter tempest attack. Suddenly, you understand that if you use the energy the Polaris telepaths are pumping into you, you are absolutely you are in absolutely no danger of being overwhelmed. You begin dancing among the Polaris, using their own energy to build barriers around their telepathic senses to stop them from attacking. Within moments, the Polaris see the futility of their efforts and the attacks cease. In a flash of inspiration, you realize you can now see how your brain functions as separate from your mind. With trembling features, you reach back and remove the enslavement device, watching, the, watching with interest the flares of activity in the parts of your brain that it controls, but keeping them from affecting you. In moments, you are finally free. How did you just survive the destruction of your nanites, asks one of the uh, nearby Polaris after the several awestruck moments, and with that comment, you realize just how e these evil devices retain control of even the most powerful Velos telepaths. The devices destroy the nanites that are a biological necessity for every Velos. Then, in a moment of surprise, you can, uh, you can sense that our crack managed to reach an escape pod and is being transported to the surface. You reach out and manipulate his mind, telling him to meet you in the bar. Well, that's quite nice. We survived, somehow. <laughs> you are forced to reach out and talk directly to the minds of the Polaris who want to hold our crack that you wish to see him in the bar. Within minutes, he is standing before you. What is it you want, he asks in his silky, quiet voice, and you can sense the in the anger he feels towards you. In response, you enter his mind and show him an accelerated pace series of images detailing how you were enslaved and your life since the moment since until the moment you were able to free yourself. When you release him, he looks stunned for several moments before rising and turning to look at you. Apology accepted, he says, bowing, and you smile, happy that he understood. I guess that I will be spending my some time with these mysterious Polaris, but one day I will return to the Empire. As of today, I outright renounce the Ash House and vow to bring about its downfall. With a nod, he turns. He, with a nod to you, he turns and indicates to his gray clo cloaked escorts that he is ready to go. As you watch our crack being led away, you realize that his last statement would have shocked most Aurorans. Despite all your telepathic abilities, only now do you sense how powerful his sense of honor is. With a sigh, you close your eyes and launch your mind out into space, trying to locate your friend, Lyril. It takes you several minutes, but eventually you are able to sense his mind on Earth at the very edge of your perception. With all your might, you reach out and manipulate his mind, letting him know that you will be coming to see him. After a moment of surprise, he quickly rearranges his surface thoughts to let you know he has understood and that he will meet you in the bar. When you open your eyes again, you see standing, you see standing before you a brown-cloaked woman wh whom you sense is the leader of the Polaris people. What will you do now, she asks. I go to learn how to free my friends, you reply quietly. Well. Well. Ah. So we don't have to... Oh, why can't we create the... Oh dear. I wonder if we have to... Oh, we have to buy the darts. Weird. Okay. That's weird. That's quite something. We've reached the end much faster than I remember. Possibly because uh, there's literally nothing else you can do in this plot uh, in this storyline other than advance the plot. But uh, you know, we now have possibly one of the more powerful ships in the game. I mean, again, the Polaris ships are are different, <laughs> very very different. I think we will try to conquer one planet before uh, before resigning this game. 
uh, just because I'd like to. As you slide into one of Kane, uh, one of the Kane Band's many docking bays, you can sense Lyril coming out to meet you. As soon as you drop your protective barrier, he steps forward and you clasp arms as equals for the first time. I always knew that you were the one. You have only one more step to take, and I'm afraid my orders prevent me from telling you what that is. If you can make the next step, then my Perry people will have the first chance to be free in our over seven centuries. You nod, understanding that he cannot tell you how to become a T-0, because he cannot teach you how to reach a level which might enable you to free him. Crypt, you ask, trying to confirm your suspicions as to who you will have to see? No, he answers, but the fact that he answered aloud and that he has completely closed off his mind gives you his real answer. You thank Lyril, telling him that it will not be long until you return. He smiles for a moment before turning serious. You had best leave quickly, he tells you, still shielding his mind. As soon as you leave, I will be reporting you as an unenslaved telepath, and I doubt they will be sparing any expense in trying to destroy you now that you are too powerful for them to control. You nod, and the two of you clasp arms again, and you begin we the your weaves to bring your existence into your javelin shell. Good luck. I hope to see you soon. With that endorsement ringing in your mind, you head out into space to head back to the Velos, head back to Velos to find and speak with Crypt. Oh yes. We, oh yeah, these guys are these guys are pushovers. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, they're not total pushovers. Oh, also I need to be using the right I need to be using the right um the right thing. I was using the wrong thing and now I'm almost dead. It's fine. We'll just wait. I don't think we're quite ready to fight against them again. Uh, fight against this guy yet. Uh, it's not too bad. We can try. Okay, we were only able to bring down his shields to 50%. Well, we'll learn better now that we, uh... Yeah, well, fine. Fine. The greatest hope of the Velos, and he died, uh, leaving the, uh... Autumn Petal. That's what we want. Mostly we want to get out of the way. Look at all of these missiles. All of these missiles. Hopefully we can avoid most of them. I'm okay taking these these chip this chip damage because we're gonna loop back around and hopefully Or not, or not. I was hoping that would be slightly more effective. Uh, I think this will work. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Uh, let's switch back to the autumn petal. Or no, I guess not. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh man, that is. Crazy danger. Oh, yeah, we're out of... Out of energy. Not that we need this to be up for long. Uh, let's try one more run. Yeah, that is... Yeah, that is... That is that. We're gonna switch to a... <sighs> Lower power weapon in the hopes of disabling, not destroying. Oh, well. What's our... Very competent. Okay. I believe we need to be deadly before a planet will take our threat of uh, conquer conquering seriously. I wonder what we should conquer. Uh, yes. Why would I say no to that? <laughs> oh well, oh well, whatever. <sighs> oh, we're free now. We could actually technically do other things.
But first, to the crypt. To crypt. Greetings. Well, fine. Be that way. You can sense the mighty intelligence that is the crypt mind focus its awareness not far from where you are landing. As you wait inside your protective barrier, it approaches you and allows you uh, approaches and allows and you allow it to enter. Whereupon, an obsidian figure of a naked woman steps onto the interior of your javelin. You wish to know how to free the Velos. I can help you, but they have been ready to evolve beyond this universe for more than a million millennia, uh, but have been waiting for the right conditions. I was created when the six uh, battle leaders imbued their minds into their nanites at the end of the Velos War to evade capture. I have grown since then, but I still retain the capacity to act as six T1s. Unfortunately, the Velos will require seven T1s to sufficiently focus enough energy to allow a single T0 to weld together their entire racial memory into one mind with enough power to move on. You halt her flow of information with a single question. One mind. T1s can focus telepathic energy. A T0 could, a true, could achieve a true telepathic union. You nod and send her a series of images, letting her know that Lyril is a T1. Then you will need a link. You are a T0, even though you don't know it yet. But if you were, are placed under enough duress, you would learn that what you have to do, the only way the Velos will link with you, is if they are ordered to attack you by the leader of the Bureau, because no other source has enough authority for them to go against their standing orders to resist being freed. You nod thoughtfully before asking Crypt how to go about trying to provoke Crane into ordering the entire Velos race into attacking you. Go to Goliath in the South Manchester system and tell the Velos there that you are going to New England to destroy the Bureau utterly, and if you succeed in getting there, Crane will order Lyril to try to destroy you, but he will only have any chance of doing so if he uses the energy of all the Velos into you. Uh, then you can join them into one mind to free them, and then we can worry about moving on. Well then, again, this is very much the, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry, it's, the crypt are not aliens. Uh, the crypt, I, I must have missed that in my previous playthroughs, but the crypt are not aliens, they're, they're Velos. Well, they were, they are Velos adjacent, at least, um, Fascinating. Um, that means we haven't even run into the only alien race that I know of. You can sense the Velos waiting for you in the bar. <laughs> that is one funny limitation about this game. And you decide to make your way to confront them, conf confront her face to face. You can sense the Velos. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to New England to start destroying the Bureau. You pass on to her without preamble. No Bureau personnel will be spared. She nods quietly, and you can sense the filaments connecting her to the rest of her race, pulsing as information is passed along. You bow in her direction before heading back to the spaceport to start what is going to be an eventful few days. So now, we head off to destroy the Bureau. Uh, you'll notice that the crypt are now... Uh, yeah, sure, why not. Okay, so the reason I died there <laughs> is because I angered the crypt, because they fell into the path of my beam, and angering the crypt is a fascinating way to die even faster than to the uh, Polaris. Uh, yeah, they have um, they have some good stuff. Okay then, we are going to... Oh, and you'll notice that the uh, things that are attacking me uh, are miniature versions of the uh, Polaris weapon. They are not nearly as... Um, they're not nearly as uh, dangerous. Oh dear, oh dear. Please, please, please let us land. Please let us land. Thank you. Okay, now we're good. Yeah, getting out of here would be a very good idea.
Okay, landing. Landing will be the fun part. Oh. Ah, you fools! Wait, what are you? Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. This weapon is way crazy powerful. As soon as you land, you attack the waiting bureau personnel, frying them instantaneously. Non-telepath cannot stand even the simplest of telepathic attacks without heavy shielding, and not even the heaviest shielding can stand for long against the terrible destructiveness of the Winter Tempest. In minutes, you have cut your way through the bureau building, destroying everything in your path. You finally reach the inner sanctum where you are confronted by a calm-looking Lyril and a frightened crane. Attack him now! She yells fear fearfully. I cannot defeat him, Lyril replies. Then get the energy from the rest of you to join, she spits out vilely. It still might not work, he answers evasively. It depends on how skilled he has become. We have no choice! Do it! He shrugs and gathers the mental energy of his entire race, launching it at you. In desperation, you react by twisting the energy around the minds of the entire Velos race. Suddenly, the weaves seem to coalesce, and you can feel your consciousness expanding and being joined by thousands of others, all thinking at one. And then, everything goes black. Prime awakens, looks around, feels small twitches trying to gain control. Irritated Prime removes the twitches, watches the metal irritations fall to the ground, senses female human, name surfaces, crane, watches as female human places small black, black device against her head. Prime watches as she tightens a finger and her essence moves away. Prime enjoys feeling another irritation pass. Prime looks into the higher realms and is greeted by an obsidian mental female, Crypt. Come join me, Prime. Together we will explore. Prime wonders and resolves to live again, soon. Prime closes his eyes and falls asleep. As suddenly as everything went black, you feel your consciousness return to its normal size. Your mind is once again contained within your skull, as opposed to some multidimensional space. As everything returns to normal, you find yourself standing across from Lyril, who is holding his enslavement device in his hands and looking down at the headless corpse of Commander Crane. Lyril drops the evil device to the floor with a look of wonder before looking up at you. There's something I, m <laughs> I must do. Meet me in the bar in an hour. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so there are certain uh, uh, narrative limitations to this game. <clears throat> As you wait in the bar, you can sense Lyril destroying all communication devices and sending all sensitive documents to a secure somewhere server somewhere else in Federation space. It doesn't take him long, but he and the rest of the Velos quickly and efficiently disable the entire Bureau network. We are ready. Now it is time to move on. I need to go to Corel to finish this. With a mental nod, you head to the spaceport to form your javelin and escort Lyril to see one of the two planets that form the Velos civilization of old. Uh, where is that? Oh man, that is way out there. I hope we're going the right way. I don't think you want to try this. Oh, I actually disabled that one. I feel a little bad about that. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know, um, you can release them from your service, uh, but it wouldn't make sense with these guys, so I'm glad that it doesn't uh, let you do that. A wild geese in reinforcement unit. Weird. Well, they're not angry at us, so... We are heading out into the deepest of space. Just two jumps away. Hello. So many have gone through the veil, we can feel them just out of reach. It's not a very normal response, I'm just saying. As soon as you land, Lyril forges together with all of the mental energy of the Velos race and launches it at the Crypt Mind, who quickly weaves a complex pattern around it before extending it to you in an incredibly focused beam of pure energy. It only takes a few moments to repeat the weaves you made on New England, this time including Crypt, and once again, everything goes dark. Prime awakens, vaster than before. Prime watches the universe unfold into infinity. The possibilities become limitless. Prime tenses, ready to launch past everything that is into everything that will be. There is a sudden tickle. 
Prime reaches back and moves a few minor pieces and feels the game change. Prime smiles as the harm is wiped away. Prime turns back to what will be and leaps forward to greet the others already awaiting there. The rest of humanity always suspected that Velos were behind the sudden release of formerly secret documents detailing the operations of the Bureau against people throughout the galaxy. However, despite the era of peace and unification resulting from the discrediting of the Bureau and their allies of the Moash House, the role of the Velos was never d confirmed. Meanwhile, Prime was waiting. And life went on, and humanity continued to stumble forward. Through wars, through peace, through a seemingly infinite number of crises and all their solutions, humanity somehow survived and grew stronger. And still, Prime waited. But eventually, after more than 50 millennia, humanity began to look to move beyond the physical universe, and Prime was ecstatic. With open arms, Prime welcomed its younger brother to the higher realms. Once they were together, nothing could stop them. And hey, where are we now? Hey, Jason Cook, didn't he make this game? How do you prepare for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke Smart, also developer. Another. <laughs> What's all this? What has happened to my game? I like that. Matt Birch, oh man, <laughs> I think I took a long, wrong turn at Palshife. You did indeed, sir, you did indeed. Matt Birch, uh, driving the Kestrel. Kestrel is one of the best. Um, I think that was everyone. Uh, they all run away almost immediately, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, this is not normally there. <laughs> uh, that is one of the, uh, that is one of the, um, mods that allows us to get back here. I don't know. I kind of like that you can only get here once. I don't know. Maybe I should, maybe I should get rid of it. Our spiel. Javelin, you are cleared to land. After more than 40 months, some 1,000-odd pages of notes and background information, 12 short stories, some 1,000-odd images, about 75,000 man-hours, more than 10,000 email messages that take up more than 24 megabytes of hard drive space. Oh, man, and more than 10 gigabytes of development. Oh, man. Okay, this was 2001. More than 10 gigabytes of development files, over 30 meetings. Oh, man, this is really 2001. And more than one strain of friendship, some of which have remained a little cool. Here is Nova. We hope you enjoy it. Oh, and congratulations on completing one of the major storylines. That's one of the six. Try again and see what else you can find. Good luck, and thanks for playing Nova. We will, of course... Oh, we can't... All right. Oh, we don't even have the money. Okay, so we need to make sure that we come here with 50 million credits, because this is literally the only place you can buy this. Because the Kestrel is a ship from one of the previous games. Uh, so 50 million credits. So we need to make sure that we have 50 million credits before we come close to finishing another storyline. We wouldn't be able to buy it anyway because we're a Velos, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong about that. Oh well. Only two examples of this dark and menacing ship are known to exist. This one was discovered floating near a wormhole at the farthest end of known space, and was subsequently salvaged and reconditioned by a collector of exo exotic starships before being put up for sale. The only other known Kestrel is privately owned by Matt Birch. Leading scientists theorize that these mystery ships somehow entered our galaxy from a parallel dimension. That's because uh, escape velocity and escape velocity override take place in different universes. At least the f mm. they might be in the same universe, uh, but they're definitely separate universes than Nova. Oh, you don't get a fancy picture. I guess this is the only fancy picture you get. Oh well. Oh man, this is a good. This is a good sh good ship. Crew one. That doesn't make sense. It probably comes with a crew of one. Welcome to the new Sydney Hotel, the best little pub in town. You walk into a happy atmosphere where everyone seems to be enjoying themselves immensely. You notice a group of six people toasting each other over a few beers and one coke. Man after my own heart. On one of the high tables near the window. You wonder what they are celebrating. Yeah, we could gamble here. Uh, no ships available for hire. Um, yeah, no, that's interesting. No missions, not surprising. Could buy metal or opals. I don't know why. Yeah, but this is why you want to get back to seven. Uh, this is this is seven, by the way. <laughs> uh, I believe it's to the south. Uh, oh no, it's way to the north. I was totally wrong about that. Never mind. So yeah, seven is only accessible this once. Ah. <sighs> I wonder what color of the board... Oh, it's purple. So, is that the same purple? No, it's a slightly brighter purple than a little purplish red, I suppose. It's between the... Uh, it's like a mix of all the colors, actually. I wonder if that was intentional. Very well. We will... 
We will bid goodbye. Oh, Stephen Chick. I don't think we saw him last time. Oh, no, we did. We did. That's a cool ship. Manticores, cool ships. I mean, it's not a Kestrel, but... Can we... Can we go back through this? No, we can't. Uh, interesting. Okay. So, we got out of that wormhole, but that wormhole will never take us back to where we uh, want to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I say that, but it also... It also just sort of... I'm... I'm remembering this now. The wormhole will take you to a random location. You also have to figure out where they are, and that's just not really worth it most of the time. Knowing which systems they're in, you can usually find them by traveling a bit, but uh, it's not... Uh... What you can usually do is fly far enough away from the system center and then try landing, and then that landing will, uh, will, will select the uh, correct the correct um, place and then give you an arrow pointing you toward it, towards it. But yeah, that's the end. Thank you for watching. Um, we are going to, so we're worthy of note, we're going to fly down, see everyone's happy with us now. Um, where is the pirate system? It, it's this way, I know it's this way. Part of the problem with all, with all this is that uh, we're Kinda. We're kinda not supposed to be here. <laughs> we're, we're supposed to have ascended to a higher plane of existence. However, since you're supposed to be able to also play the game after this, uh, you can continue playing. However, as I said, um, yes, pirate. So we're going to head to the pirate system, and maybe we'll try taking over the pirate system. That probably makes the most sense. That way no one else gets angry at us. But they will shoot at us. That actually took a little bit of time to knock down the shields. Unfortunately... Yeah, we're not going to... Yeah... Ah, pirate re reinforcements. Excellent. Come on, there we go. I'm not too worried about these guys. I am worried about that guy. Uh, he's actually a bit of a problem. Not for the Winter Tempest, but still. The trouble is... <laughs> Never mind, it's not a trouble. It's not like we have anything to worry about. Ah, we totally missed that. Yeah, uh, can we bribe them? Oh, 4,000 credits, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Why are you jumping away? There are different factions of the pirates, and I can't remember what the difference is, to be entirely honest. Um... I know the Marauders are the ones that uh, nobody likes. Wow, that is a lot of uh, a lot of things. Right, we bribed them and now we made them unhappy with us. So we're still worthy of note. Uh, man, look at that! Twenty-four jumps. That's amazing. No missions, uh, plenty of ships. Can we buy ships? Uh, well, they're still... Okay, so we can buy ships. Ion cannons. Oh, man, those those things are good. Uh, that's, the, that's the other... I don't think we can buy any of these things because we don't actually have a ship. Well, we'll just have to settle for... See, the problem is we need a large number of things we can blow up in order to raise our ability. 
You know, what I think we're gonna do... I'm gonna pause, and then when we come back, I'll be deadly. So that took a little longer than I expected, because it's not dangerous that you can take over planets, it's deadly, which is one, one degree above. However, one degree above is double the combat rating. So, I believe we are now ready to de demand tribute from this pirate station. And we should be able to dodge out of the way of all of this pretty easily. Ooh. Yeah, I forgot this is actually kind of difficult. <laughs> this is one of those things you do after you've done everything else. We should be able to whittle these guys down pretty well. I believe I read online at some point that pirate or these fleets are made up of 120 vessels. There's just so much. I just need to let the uh, shield recharge. That's the real problem. Being nearby is unfortunately the one place we don't want to be, and being nearby is an also unfortunately the only place we can reach them with our weapons. I think as long as we're careful, we'll be fine. The real problem is that there's just so many of them. I think the positive side is that only one or two are coming after us at a time. The rest are hanging back for some reason. Not that I'm complaining. Also, we have ridiculously overpowered weapons, so that, that helps. Really, we just need our energy or shields to recharge. It would be nice if that just happened, but I don't think it will. See, they, they get in enough shots at us that it is chipping away at our shields. We will be able to do this, definitely, but... Uh, you know, uh, as much as I hate saying it, I think we have to put it into times two mode and then just run away, letting our shield recharge, which will take forever. Every time we do this, we get chipped away at. It's just no fun. There's just so many of them. Yeah, I think the only... Our only option is to head in one direction uh, and let our shield recharge. Unfortunately, we have to pick off this guy because he's faster than we are, so he's gradually... Oh, no! Ah, oh, okay. Well... We can do this. We can totally do this. Uh, to build up our combat rating, I actually flew all the way south down to uh, here, Kipa, which is where the houseless warriors are. Um, they have more people. <laughs> uh, it was getting tough to find things to fight up by the pirates, but there's enough houseless warriors that uh, we had plenty of plenty of time. Um, let's actually. Uh, let's actually create our darts. Yeah, yeah. So we created our darts, we got our summer bloom going, and now we're going to demand tribute. And we're going to try to get them to waste all of their ammo 
Uh, right, right, right. Some of these are faster than we are. I think we're doing a little better this time. We're going to set our darts after them. Um, I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, but it should at least give them a different target to shoot at for a little bit. Because most of them should be focused on us. We're going to try to head in for a, a sweep. That, that went pretty well. I think. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. We are in bad straits. Yeah, the darts are definitely helping us, though. Ah, need to run away. Ran away too late. Too late indeed. I mean, this isn't supposed to be easy. I think third time's the charm, though. Third time's the charm, and then we'll be done. Ow. I bent back my fingernail when I dropped something, and it really hurts. Okay, we are going to... We are going to, uh... Well, fine, we'll... We'll drop by. It's probably a trap, but that's okay. Come on. Board? Maybe? There we go. We will give him a trans uh, a uh, drop off at Space Dock Three, but first we've got to go take over the pirate base. I wonder. This is a crazy idea, but they all spawn. Okay, this this is crazy. This is definitely crazy. But I have an idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit out here. We're going to hail the station, demand tribute, and immediately fire on them, which should knock out a... Okay, well, that kind of worked. Summer Bloom, this guy... Okay, well, that knocked out some of them. We, we just couldn't sustain that, unfortunately. I like how the manticores are just not even a threat. Oh yeah, okay, that, that winter tempest takes way too much energy. The summer bloom is where it's at, because we can... We can knock these guys out pretty easily. Man, those uh, darts are actually hanging on pretty long. Uh... Unfortunately, now it's our energy that's low. We're slowly making our progress, though. Ah, uh, we need to run. We need to run. Look at all of those things. Look at all of those things. It's ridiculous. You know, they really don't want you, uh, capturing stations. Still... We're getting there. Okay. Which one was it? Summer, right? Summer is the good one. They seem to be... Well, I was about to say they seem to be shooting at us less, but, uh, never mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know of a way of dealing with all of this without just running away, because they're still throwing some pretty good weaponry at us. I guess it's the kite, uh, we just have to kite them all, which is unfortunately not a fast, um... Not a fast maneuver. Fast procedure. Just listen to all those missiles. Yep, 
Yeah, let's just head this way. <sighs> okay, we'll double back, hit the, hit the Thunderheads. The Thunderheads are a really cool ship. They're awful to fly, but they're a really cool ship. Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna fly this way for a while. Regain our shields and our energy. It's boring, I know, but this is the uh, this is the way to do it. We could theoretically jump away. Um, we could theoretically jump away. And uh, they're all bunched up. This is the problem. It looks like they're all Valkyries, though. At least a majority of them seem to be. Look at how much stuff they're throwing at us. See, that, that just that blew out all of our shields. That's the problem. Hanging out this far, though, it should take them some time to get back at us. So we might be okay out here. See, individual ships are not a problem. The Summer Bloom is good enough to defeat them all. <laughs> These poor passengers. They didn't know what they were getting into. Yeah. So, this isn't going so badly. The trouble is, it's so tempting to fly back, you know? Because you want to... you want to make progress, you don't want to just fly away the entire time. This isn't doing... we aren't doing too badly this time. Yeah, these guys are not a problem either. You know, when you try taking over Earth, that's when people get really mad at you. I can't imagine why. The problem is, we just don't have that much armor. If we had more armor, we'd be a lot... in a lot better of a position. I think this is... this is working well, though. We're... Defeating things. They're coming out one by one at this point. Basically. The only way we can fight is by... Ah, uh, oh, picking them off one by one. The problem is they group up like this and then we just have to run. Yeesh. Okay. We're not doing too badly. Could be better, could be better. Uh, but we're not dead yet, at least. Our next playthrough is going to be a lot more normal. Like, we're going to be a traitor, things will make sense, we won't get enslaved. Like, all sorts of things will be different. Oh, we are... We need to run. Just, they throw so much at you. Okay, so we're just gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna go... Blah, blah, blah. We're going to go like this for a while. Because that's all we can do. Ah. Uh, it's too bad you can't uh, increase the time compression even more. You know, it's funny. <laughs> we might loop around and head back... Or end up back at the station again. Um, yeah. And then nothing will be guarding it, because they'll all be chasing us way behind us. We're not a terribly fast ship. Um, 120 degrees a second, max speed 375. Yeah, not terribly fast. You'd think being the, you know, the overmind and the thing that brought the entire Velos race together, we could get a ship that was slightly faster. So we'll turn back this direction now. 
I don't know if all the things coming after us are going to uh, turn around, in which case we'll end up back at the system center at about the same time, or if they'll continue chasing us, in which case there will be nothing at the, at the system center, which I'm also okay with. But you see, it's taking this long for our shields to come back. Ah, uh, oh boy. You know, I when I looked up uh, what skill rating you needed to be uh, to destroy a or to take over a solar system. Um, oh yeah, this is the system center. There's just nobody here now. Uh, when I looked that up, I noticed that the Velos storyline, if you decline it, you actually end up with a Polaris storyline. Story so I made just two mistakes there. Well, I didn't, I didn't make the first mistake. The game just gave me the, uh, the choice I wasn't expecting. Um, but hey, at least we got fabulous psychic powers out of the deal, right? Can't complain too much about that. Okay, I kind of regret having led those guys so far out. Now now no more ships are spawning from the station, because the maximum number of ships are already attacking us. I actually don't know that there is a maximum number of ships. In fact, I'm pretty sure there isn't in a system. Uh, well, at least nothing that you'll run into. No, I know there isn't, because uh, there's actually a mod that makes all of the ships come out at once, which is pretty crazy. Um... However, uh, the station will only send ships at you six at a time. That was the other thing I saw on, on the web. You know, I just found out that the, um, the guy uh, who, who maintains the Escape Velocity walkthrough uh, site, um, he's a, apparently a, was it a Belgian lawyer? I just found that amusing. So now, finally, uh, we'll be getting one ship to spawn at a time from the system center, which is going to be a lot more manageable, if I remember the buttons I'm supposed to be pushing. So now, we can just basically sit around here, picking these guys off one at a time, and not worry too much about uh, dying. Oh man, is that a... yeah, that's uh, some artifacting, that's interesting. That doesn't happen very often. Unfortunately, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, oh, this is painful. The ionization makes your turn rate like nothing, and it's so d difficult to deal with. It's not fun. And unfortunately, now we can't go back to the system center because there's a bunch of ships back there. But we have a lot more armor or shielding now, so I'm more okay with it. These guys are angry. I wish somebody would make a sequel to this game. Like, this game was amazing. Like, they don't even need to upgrade all that much, uh, and it would make an amazing game. I, I, I feel like... The thing that would make it more amazing uh, would just be more of it, uh, and more writing, more storylines, uh, more more things to do. Uh, sorry, more. Um, ah, already we're we've squandered. Well, I guess we didn't squander. We got rid of quite a few ships. Um, uh, but more reactiveness to the uh, galaxy, I guess. Um, which doesn't seem impossible, right? Like, it seems like that should be totally doable. It's not something that... Oh, man, these are just so many of them. I was not expecting our shields to be the limiting factor in particular. I mean, I figured they would be a limiting factor, but... The... Oh, my... Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Okay, well, 
I just wasted so much time, and I am so sorry about that. Uh, and we killed the passengers that we rescued, so that's even worse. I'm going to get back to where we were. No, there's nothing I can do. We just have to go back to where we were, I guess. Um, and off we go. I'm going to try, and I don't know that this is going to work. It's this one. Uh, there we go. So, I'm going to try to stay at the system center this time. I mean, this is probably a really bad idea, but... Here we go. Oh no, oh no, I made terrible mistakes. <sighs> there really is no other way to do this other than just... Uh, slowly picking them off. Okay, so that was what? Five, six, seven, eight. This is going to take a while. Oh, please come back. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 7, okay, so not quite, not quite, 17, you know, there's a lot of dust here, you're supposed to be able to see stars in the background, oh man, that was unfortunate, oh man, this is painful. I think we just have to run away, because they need to start chasing after us before we can really do anything. Come on. Ah, we just can't get close enough, unfortunately. Well, here we go again. I'll meet you when we're back around again. Okay, we've made it all the way back around again. Back to the system center, and now we wait for things to kill. I think the trouble is, I need to kill them one at a time. Because if I don't kill them one at a time, multiple things spawn, and then I just lose control. The other thing we might try is jumping to another system, uh, landing, and coming back. Because I believe the you're, you're afforded as many attempts as you like, really. Okay, I, I kind of expected there to be a thing to fight here. Sorry. <laughs> I guess not. Well. I would assume you'll come by eventually. Let's just wait for it. Wait for it. Someday. Okay. This is getting a little ridiculous. Um. Hmm. I'll be back. There he is. Oh. They're not spread out at all. That's no fair. And yeah, I know. 
I'm not doing what I said I would do, which was spreading things out. Yeah, something happened to the background. Like, there's supposed to be stars. Like, I see one or two, but something is definitely off. I think we may also try to jump to another system. Ugh, there's just so many. Uh, we're not doing too badly with this run. Okay, well, I guess it's time to make another run around the system. Which is all sorts of fun, so... You know what? We're just going to jump away, so if this does indeed save our progress, uh, then we won't have to worry about this again. And this will be much faster, I won't have to pause the recording, everything will be happier. Ah. <sighs> I do remember this being difficult, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, sure, yeah. I guess we'll create some darts on our way. Okay, we want summer, okay. Um, well, that doesn't seem like it worked, unfortunately, so I don't, again, I, I don't think they respawn. I could be wrong. But that's what the internet told me, that they don't respawn, that is. Would the internet lie? We've been able to hang out here for a lot longer. I wonder why. Maybe because our darts are doing work? That could be. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of ships here. Oh, okay. I think we do finally need to start running. I just wish there was a way to... You know what we could do? We could hire escorts, and the escorts would help. But that would cost money, and I don't want to, you know, spend money. Oh my goodness, why are, there, why are they so difficult to deal with? It's almost like I don't... It's almost like they don't want you, um... Taking over their system. But that would be ridiculous. Why wouldn't they want you taking over their system? That's why it's there, right? Hey. Okay, yeah, I think the problem is we always do poorly when I underestimate when I underestimate our necessity of having shields. So as boring as it sounds, uh, I'll meet you briefly. So I had the idea of turning around and we're just going to fight these guys one by one, which should mean that when we get closer to the system center, they'll be spread out. I mean, you'd hope. We're still pretty far, so it should still take a while for us to get there. But this way, the slower ships will be behind the faster ships, and they'll all take a while to get to us. So our shields will recharge, and things will be good. Yeah, like, this guy is already here. The more we can spread out these guys, the better. And I think if we, if we maintain about, about this distance, we should be okay. The trick is we need to run in and blow up a couple ships. And then run away. That way, they get spread out, 
and we can pin uh, we can take them down one by one as they as they take off. There's just so many things coming at us. We seem to be maintaining a pretty good level of shielding though. Yeah, this is actually seeming to work pretty well. Yeah, without the starry background, it's actually kind of hard to tell how fast you're moving. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking there are more than six ships uh, out here. So I'm thinking the internet lied to me. I can't believe that ha I can't believe anyone would lie on the internet. That's just not nice at all. The real trouble is, every time the new ship takes off, they have, you know, a fresh complement of missiles and weapons, and it's just no fun. Look at all of these things flying at us. That's just incredible. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. How does that happen? It must be those missiles. Those missiles just eat through our shields and then... Ugh. Okay. Well, I'm not going to make you sit through this. I'm just going to come back when I've uh, successfully done this. Uh, and then, and then uh, we will celebrate. I think I am finally through it all. And really, the whole plan really was just fly around in a giant circle. Oh my goodness, seriously. No way. I just defeated so many of you, it's not even funny. I would have laughed if I had died right there. Um, really, the plan was fly around in a big circle, pick off one or two. Okay, seriously. Uh, pick off one or two, and uh, then return back to the center of the of the area. Ah, oh, man. That was, that was difficult. I suppose that is the point. Oh, my goodness. Stop. Fine. Now that you're back, we will demand tribute again. Okay, you win. The station agrees to pay you tribute. So now, this station is dominated, it is green, and we can land there anytime we want without having to pay for... Okay, fine. The uh, denizens don't have to like it, though. That's okay. We can blow them up. Oh my goodness. Okay, we now are... the. We now have dominated a harbor. Well, it is March 1st. Uh, well, not in reality. It's March 14th in reality. Happy Pi Day, by the way. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining. And, uh, well, we will start anew uh, in the next episode, probably with a different plot line. Um, we'll keep this file around just in case we, uh, just in case we get interested, though. Have a wonderful day.